Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Out There Oceans of Time. It is a interstellar voyage RPG, kind of, sort of. You know, it's probably changed dramatically since the uh, first iteration, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, Century 21. Earth's sun is suddenly and inexplicably extinguished. Humanity flees a dying Earth aboard Great Arcs, seeking refuge on distant stars. After journeys that span thousands of years, some arcs succeeded in creating new permanent civilizations. Others lost their way and disappeared into something. Humanity once thought of itself as the only intelligent species in the galaxy. They were mistaken. The entire galaxy was governed by the God Cubes, all powerful entities that had taken it upon themselves to unite all species, abolish violence, and end the concept of territor territoriality? But not everyone worships these beings, a persuasive genetic chameleon, a member of the Lord's race. Calling itself the Archon rises, cool, and is gone. The Archon Rebellion is the desired re effect. It destabilizes the order established by the God Cubes. After a fierce pursuit, the Archon is captured. It's entrusted to Nyx, captain of the Vanguard, and brought before the Mausoleum of Eternity, a prison world. It's Some of these lines give me plenty of time, others do not. <laughs> And I'm thrown off and I'm like, well, how do I even read all of this? Luckily, you guys can just go back and pause. The Vanguard and his crew are now approaching their destination. They're about to accomplish their important mission. I like the ship design. It is actually properly sci-fi. Like, high sci-fi, I think is the phrase. Go check the engines. At this pace, we won't arrive before the next solar cycle. I say, Captain, I've never seen, met anyone who actually is eager to reach the Mausoleum of Eternity. We're delivering a prisoner, not getting locked up ourselves. Why should I be concerned? The deadliest beings in the galaxy are imprisoned there, all together in the same place. Don't tell me you're not even a little afraid. It's mostly boredom that scares me. Once we hand the Archon over to the Mausoleum authorities, I hope to mark, I hope to mark the end of my thrilling career as a transporter. You don't have a family waiting for you? My family's my crew and my ship, Officer Sergei. I can't see myself staying at home when there's a whole galaxy full of mysteries out there. I must confess that I know a little outside of the organization and view for being able to choose your missions, to travel wherever you want. And that's how you grow, officer, by testing yourself, facing worlds and life forms that you could never have imagined. There are risks, of course, but I'd rather that than die ignorant or bored. The crew told me about some of your exploits. They say you live without fear. Being afraid is not the problem. We just can't show it. Not when the survival of others depends on us. You will come to understand, after a few more centuries of experience. Captain, three unknown spacecraft approaching at high velocity. Who are they? Give me an ID now. Our scans show they wear the colors of the Archon. They're here for their leader. Full power to engines. They must not be allowed to catch up. Captain, we have a problem. The interplanetary thruster isn't responding. Our engineers are trying to fix it, but the unknown ships are gaining on us be happening not now of all times okay this is the ship's cargo hold you can build repair and organize your technologies modules and resources the interplanetary reactor is damaged you must repair it before the ship can continue its journeys the thrusters back online but we've lost fuel and the ships are entering attack range I wonder how did the arc I wonder how did the archon manage to contact them Surely the Archon had a working network long before its war against the Lords. It must have transmitted its location just before the capture. They've been tracking uh, tracking us ever since. A network? Who'd be crazy enough to ally with such a destructive being? Not our concern, Officer Sergei. Right now we need fuel. Fast. Okay, click and drag resources, hydrogen to fuel. Or er, what? To the corresponding gauges. Oh, I see. Slide fuel here. What was that? They rammed it. Uh, they rammed us, Captain Nix. Hull integrity compromised. How naive. Did you really think you could imprison a demigod? Captain, the Archon cell has been breached. You humans always fighting for lost cause. Or lost causes. I would pity you except for you tried to prevent me from bringing salvation to the universe. So instead, I'm going to sit back and enjoy your pathetic flailings. Another impact. 
We cannot let the Archon escape. I'd love to stay, but I have such great plans for the galaxy, for all of creation, in fact. Such a pity you won't get to see them. The ship's in critical condition, Captain. We must evacuate. I really wish they had used the illustrations for the characters. The 3D models are just a little uncanny valley for me. I get it, it's an indie game, but it's like, oh, but the rest of the game has such great art. I don't know. I'm... I'm picky. I'm assuming the reason why they went with 3D is because a number of the characters are procedurally generated, and it's a lot easier to do that with three-dimensional artwork rather than two-dimensional. Yeah, I don't think this is kind of lightly roguelike-ish like the last one. Because the last out there was more about just like getting from point A to point B. I think this one might actually have more of a, a firm narrative element. Like, the previous one was... Point A to point B with random events and multiple endings. Whereas this feels a little bit more like you actually have a strict, specific goal. Probably for the best. Destination reached. Terminating cryosleep. Atmosphere breathable. Opening airlock. Where? Where's my crew? Sergey. I don't feel well. I think I'm going to throw up. What a fool. Of course Sergey isn't here. No one's here. I remember now. I lost the Vanguard. I was in cryosleep on an escape pod. I must have crash landed on a planet. Almost certainly be dead soon, if I'm not already. Huh? It's a signal of some kind, but what? Uh, everything hurts. I shouldn't push myself too hard. So Nyx is a survivalist. Her class makes her highly self-reliant in unknown territory. She's 3 AP, can be used to obtain rewards during next adventures, text adventures, to activate the skills of crew members. Her skills are specialized in exploration and survival. Clicking on Cataplasm skill consumes energy and heals Nyx. On expeditions, the party movement is limited. Maximum number of tiles can move, and number of tiles visible around the team. Each team member can equip an item. These provide a passive bonus during expeditions. Nyx is carrying sacred ointments, has a chance of modifying her speed, and will be applied for six rounds. Clicking on the tile moves expedition members to that location. Well, I'm going to go here real quick, see if there's anything. Blue arrow indicates an important item. Okay, so nothing, nothing back on the ship. Nope. Nope. There. That's how I rotate. Or rotate. That's how I move the camera. Well, I guess we're just going to go this direction. It does look cool. Officer Sergey, Captain Nix, you survived. More or less, but the Archon escaped. We lost the Vanguard. My crew is ejected earlier, but the trajectory is different. So glad to see you again. It's a miracle. I thought the Archon was going to kill us. It did, Officer Sergey. A captain without a ship isn't really alive. We've failed. This is the worst possible scenario. I know all of that, Nix, but at least we're together again. We'll think of we'll think of something. We'll figure it out, unless you prefer to just give up. That's Captain Nix to you, officer, and you've made your point. So, first question is, where are we? Not a clue. The escape pods are programmed to seek out planets with habitable environments. Beyond that, we know nothing. Any chance the organization will send a rescue team? It's unlikely. Recapturing the Archon was their top priority. Besides, even at the best of times, they aren't fond of failure. Too right. We have failed, completely and utterly. It's supposed to be a simple convoy mission. It's our fault the Archon escaped. All the people it will kill. Everything it destroys, that's on us. We have to find it and stop it before it does too much damage. First, we need to get off planet. I'm open to suggestions. Is your scanner working? I think mine was damaged in the landing. Mine's fully functional. I'll scan the area and see if I can find a trace of a ship. I'm getting something. Good work, officer. Let's get moving. We smell smoke. Uh, smoke from a freshly lit campfire and decide to approach, simultaneously happy and apprehensive about finding signs of life on the planet. As we draw near, we see an alien lying near the flames. They don't look well, their breathing is slow and weak, and they don't react as we approach. Nearby is a bag full filled with blood-spotted materials. When they see where our attention is drifted, the alien glances at us and suggests we take their bag, because they don't think they're going to survive, the uh, survive their accident. Mend their bones. 
Our engineer manages to create a plaster cast saturated with an ointment that accelerates the regeneration of bone and cartilage. However, they, they had to use all their stock to help. Quite quickly, the alien feels better and thanks us for our help. It offers us everything it owns in exchange for the help we gave it. So, cool. It doesn't look like I lost anything. Like, we lost an action point, but oh well. Now, I'm seeing an icon that has blood. Probably cacti. Okay, so... Yeah, bleeding, lose every round. Now, this consumes materials. Two health, I don't... I don't know why I would use the nano stabilizers over the cataplasm. Okay, well, at the very least, we can go over here and mine some resources. Okay, did we get it? I'm assuming we did. Okay, he's losing HP, but that's fine. Oops. So what else do we have? Status? And move status and vision status have been applied for the crew for three rounds. Swiftness and improved vision. Also, we have... Okay, there's no points of interest to grab. Okay. Oh. I see. So I need to conserve action points maybe a little bit. Our expedition group enters a ghost town. Time appears to have stopped, halted by the many gigantic spider webs that cover every building. Near the path we've chosen, we spot an enormous cocoon. The captain approaches, certain she can hear the faint noise of breathing. After a moment of silence, we hear a call for help coming from inside the cocoon. There's something inside. Though we want to help, we, are, we aren't certain how to proceed. The cocoon seems to be covered in a toxic substance. Acid detergent. Officer Sergei decides to concoct a mixture, especially for this situation. They slather it all over the cocoon, which, after a few ten seconds, begins to melt away from around the alien trapped inside. It rises from its imprisonment, sucking in fresh air and proffering a bag at us, seemingly as a show of gratitude. When we look inside, we've found the acid destroyed all the plant matter, leaving the materials in intact. So how do we get AP back? Or maybe we don't, is the answer. I think we only get so much AP on a adventure like this. Captain Nix, readings indicate we are already quite close to the signal. We need to pinpoint the exact location. Can you narrow the search? You can try recalibrating. Stand by, Captain. Okay, you can now summon the ship. Use the call icon, summon the ship. Do you want to call the ship? Require some fuel. That's fine. I did get the material up north, didn't I? Well, it's not letting me pan around anymore. Or now it is. Yeah, I think we got it. Was this our ship or is this a new one? Board the ship? Yes, board the ship. I don't think there's anything else to do. All right, we get some EXP, morale goes up, and we find plants and minerals. Look at this, it's magnificent. Not really, it's a rusty old wreck. Try to see the potential, Captain. We can get it working again. We're going to need your help, though. I'm not a mechanic, but I'll do what I can. All the raw material we need is already here. We just need a refinery, then we can dismantle the shield generator to recover the thorium we need. And with a functional refinery, we can extract resources from any raw materials we find. You really believe you can make this hunk of junk fly, don't you? I give you my word, Captain, we're not going to die on this planet. Okay, we're missing some of the resources to build a refinery, but it's possible to recycle existing technologies in order to collect the necessary resources. Okay, so disassemble the shield generator. Build a refinery. And to the refinery. Refining ores yields a wide variety of resources. Click to refine one. This iron can be used to repair the drill. Click transfer all, transfer to the cargo hold. Okay, fix. The drill is now working. The resources needed to repair the interplanetary reactor can be drilled, 
from the surface of this unknown planet. Okay, drilling will yield resources needed to repair the drive. So, will cost some fuel. So we could also do depth 10. Do a depth 6. Okay, select the reactor to fix it. Everything's ready. What are we waiting for? Let's launch. The air on this planet makes me nauseous. I'd like to find the Vanguard. Maybe we can salvage it. We should be able to retrace our trajectory without too much trouble. And if the Vanguard can be fixed, I'll do it. That's what I'd like to hear, officer. Now show me what this wreck is capable of. Ready to take off. Alright, so I could keep drilling, but let's just take off for the time being. Oh, there's a thing? Oh, wait, no. That icon is probably for access inventory. Also a cool looking ship. I like the designs. I The artistry on this game is pretty good. I don't understand. I'm hailing on all friendly frequencies, but no one's answering. Are we out of range? In a way, Captain. According to the ship's console, we're in, a, in the same galaxy, but a hundred years in the future. What? We spent a century in cryosleep? Guess the escape pods couldn't find a habitable planet any sooner. A century. Imagine what the Archon's been up to during all that time. The organization must think we're dead. We have to find a way to contact them. It's a long way to the Vanguard. Hope this ship will hold together until then. We don't have a choice. Are you sure you can find it? Yes, I still have the coordinates of the system where we were attacked. What are the odds we find our ship in any kind of salvageable condition after all this time? Well, it won't deteriorate in the void, but someone might have salvaged it. That's a risk I'm willing to take. I need my ship back, Officer Sergei. Set a course. Location of the attack. Me, not too far away. Blue circle represents the range of the telescope. Within this boundary, different types of stars can be detected. Yellow circle represents the range of the cosmic folder. Ship can travel within this range. Gives you access to your ship. Galactic view, solar system view, and ship view. Select a star system within range of the cosmic folder and make your first trip. Okay. Click on a system and move towards the location of the attack. What if I just want to wander off, though? My dwarf. I... Mm, I don't know. Do we want to just wander for a bit? Ooh! That's... That's some pretty. I mean, it's just a tunnel, but it looks neat. A small bright object shaped like an isohedron flies quite near our ship. We glimpse writing in an unknown language, but it's gone before we can identify it. Either we carry on, let it carry on with its current trajectory, or we can try and catch it. Catch it! Thanks to the extraordinary pilot piloting skills of one of the crew, we managed to recover the object. Though its inner workings remain completely incomprehensible to us, the materials it's crafted from are precious indeed. On a hollow scanner. There are several different types of stars. Later on in... The adventure specific technologies will allow you to orbit them without putting the ship or the crew in danger. Several celestial objects are orbiting the system. Nature of these celestial objects depends on the type of star. So gas giants have fuel, rocky planets have iron, and garden planets have oxygen. To orbit a stellar object, either click on one of the icons in the top right or on the planet in the display. Be careful not to navigate towards the system central star without first installing the appropriate technology. Let's see what we can do on each of these. I know I should be focused on my goal, but I think I'm just going to be wandering a little bit. It looks like it can land. There's a lot of costs, though. And it doesn't look like I can explore this one, either. So, blueprints, telescope, hydrogen probe. I think we probably already have most of these. I can convert a text slot, but I'm not sure what that does. Slot modules, slot resources, module slot, some other things. Do I have a geoscanner? I do. But it looks like it might be... It might be damaged? Maybe not. What is this? Omega. Oh. Okay, so that's some kind of resource we don't have access to. Alright. So in that case... 
take off, we want to find a gas giant. Uh, let's see. So if I go back to solar system view. Oh, wait. It contains a storage array. Allows you to make a manual save. Oh, it's this thing. Okay, well, we have a gas giant, so let's go grab whatever fuel we can. Something there was kind of pricey. Okay, ship's hull has been weakened. It would be wise to extract the resources needed for repairs from a rocky planet as soon as possible. Okay, we need a lot of fuel. Okay, this is no longer worth it. So maybe two gathers from one of these, and then then that's about it. Ugh, that was costly. And then we do have a rocky planet, so I can potentially get some iron. It does look like this is going to be an expensive venture. We're going to be spending a lot of resources just keeping the ship maintained. Oh, rocky and garden planets sometimes contain anomalies. The geoscanner allows you to identify zones where these anomalies are located. Our crew can then mount expeditions to explore these points of interest. Okay, by using the cursor and arrow keys A and D on the keyboard, identify the location of an anomaly. So... There we go. So this is straight out of Mass Effect 2. Seam of resources, three skulls, risks, asphyxia, and fever. I'm gonna try it anyway, just just because. Okay, so expedition. Members of the crew can be selected to go on expeditions. If either Nyx or Sergei die on an expedition, the adventure is over. Up to four crew members can go on an expedition at any time. Each character has a specific class. The higher their level, the more effective their skills will be and the more action points they can spend. So survivalist, engineer, and xenolinguist. They can be dangerous. It's best to pick characters in a good state of health. If the ship is equipped with the sickbay, then health points can be recovered during interstellar trips. Number of action points is limited. They may increase when a crew member levels up. These points allow you to use skills to react to narrative events during expeditions. Each character's skills are represented here. Cool. Assigns them. Uh, assign items to new I uh, mm, new items to crew members. Oh. So this one might have a limited number of uses. Yep. That's maybe a bit of a shame. Let's just do. When a resource pain is revealed, the crew gains 60 XP points. Yep. Absolutely. What's the chest scavenger do again? Right. Reveals chests on the map. I don't know how much I need to care about that. Maybe these are a little bit more loosey-goosey though and I can explore freely. Now, it does look like we are going to have Asphyxia. Oof. One health points every two rounds. Next loss in two rounds. Well. Luckily, we have heals. So, I shouldn't worry too much. Okay, it doesn't look like we got hit by anything nasty. And it doesn't look like there's any kind of penalty for wandering around. So it might be best for me to constantly see if there's an alternate route that does not involve going through spiky bits. Okay, finds a flask. Because it seems like there's a lot of alternate routes here that might let us just skip danger. Not entirely true. But I'd like to get as many events done as possible before... I open up that can of worms? I don't know. Okay, so there's a whole area down here, but I want nothing to do with it. Yeah, this was certainly not in the, not in the previous game. Last one, you just stopped at planets and 
solar systems and there was no like real uh, exploration to be done on a planet uh, bleh. like on a planet side basis it was always just like hey you know let's go here check this out this use mine we spot an enormous land sticking out of the ground as if thrown from orbit by an angry sky god in reality it's a planetary drill used to open a mine but subsequently abandoned for no apparent reason dig down deeper well we don't have tech blueprints leave the mine dig even deeper Tweezers have been destroyed, but we get more resources. Okay, that looks to be it. We haven't used any AP yet, so I guess next order of business, I'm going to probably head into this northern branch, see if there's... Wait, no, no, I've been there. So it's really that one southern segment here. That I haven't been to. Well... We have plenty of AP and no real risks, so I might as well just do it. Okay, Nyx. Oof. Oh, okay, that's not as bad. We do have another mine here. Does more damage. Okay. Our expedition arrives in a large open-air mine. The minerals here are abundant and the veins glisten under the starry sky. A veritable treasure trove. However, there are minor drones here. It would seem a nameless interstellar corporation is farming the area's resources. Yet we haven't come across a civilization. The corporation plundering the planet. Have these robots been working here long? Can we take our share without provoking them? Hijack the drones. Our engineer locates the drone's main communication frequency. The technology is robust, but it seems ancient. It's a relatively easy matter to program, reprogram the mine for us, even deliver the materials to our requested location without our having to, without our even having to move. We relax while the drones take care of everything, satisfied with the thrill of a successful mission. Okay, then we've got another one of these. So he is in, he is in danger now. Let's heal him up. Our expedition comes across a ravine, the walls of which are laced with some are laced with limestone caves. Our equipment indicates that somewhere in there lies a rich deposit of resources. However, it's cold, and getting colder the deeper we travel. First, the chill is polar, then atmospheric. Quick, then it quickly becomes painful. Should we continue? Go on! Our route takes us an inestimable abundance of materials. Takes us to an inestimable abundance of materials. However, the trove is immersed in a lake, lake of liquid nitrogen, infinitely cold. It's impossible to gather everything, especially considering we're already frozen near death. Our retreat back to the surface is a hellish ordeal, but once free of the caves, we spend several hours warming ourselves in the light of the sun. We have hypothermia for four rounds. Oh. I could have actually taken a safe, safe path down here and not run the risk of disease. Did not even notice this is a viable path. Ah, and hypothermia hurts our movement. So it looks like hypothermia just absolutely ruins our ability to move for a bit. But otherwise, I think we're fine. All right, cool. I don't think there's anything left on this map. Anything left on this map. Now it looks like we're good. Alright, well we come away with uh, 58 materials. Don't worry about it. Let's see. Oh, that did cost... Cost me some metal. Oh well. Okay, so we've done the mine heist. We took some damage. I should have gone around. Ah, is what it is. At least morale is good. And we get a flask, whatever flasks are useful for. Alright. When an expedition is over, your crew members experience fatigue. They can only be deployed to the field again after several interstellar trips. Okay, so fatigue is two. They can still be used on board the ship. 
And in developing their specializations, crew members can enhance the effectiveness of some techs aboard the ship. Cool. Maybe not immediately useful, but cool for this. So what do we have? Plants, tons of minerals. I don't think I have any... Wait. Oh, I can enter the refinery. Okay, here we go. Well, I guess I'm just going to refine minerals. Oh. Oh. I don't... Ah. Uh, I don't have any inventory space. Because we have a sick bay. We have tons of materials and plants, but there's not much I can do with it. And until we actually get some extra inventory space. Because it could convert this to a storage spot, but we don't even have any... Iron, strictly. Uh, let's see. Slide oxygen here. I don't know what to do with plants. But yeah, we're we're kind of stuck for a bit. I don't know. I I guess I'm just gonna take off and we'll just wander around. Hopefully, we can find some place to offload some of these. Let's go galactic view. And I don't know. Oops. Do we want to head for the red giant or do we want to just start heading for directly for our objective? I'm going to do that. Oh, but there might have been a star lane there. Whoops. Oh, well. A couple of gas giants, though. Ooh, that's going to hurt hull stability super bad. Well, let's find out. How about bad was it? About as bad as it possibly could have been. Okay, we don't have enough storage space, but we can immediately just get fuel. I'm going to do a second one. I don't actually know how worth it that was. And let's... Do we just do the other? I think so. I... Look. I don't want to say we're in do or die territory, but that's usually how these games go. So I guess this does maintain some of the roguelike. Or more so roguelite element. Of the last... Uh, Probe is out of order. Can't do anything with it for the moment. So once again, I don't have enough inventory space to fit stuff. We do have the module slots. I could switch it for a text slot. That's not helpful. What we need is storage. And I need to refine stuff before I do it. Mmm. Oh, I don't know how much I want to en engage in greed here. Let's go for the next one. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and find somebody willing to trade with me. Or, you know, we find a rocky planet. All right. I think at this point we just have to toss some stuff. There's some iron. There's another iron. Okay, so instead of immediately opening it up, I'm going to turn that module slot into storage. Because we don't have enough at the moment. Uh, let's see. Let's just do this kind of slow. So at least now we have some iron and we've cleared out at least some of these crystals. But if I do it five at a time, we're far less likely 
to overflow. And I don't even know how many different resource types we can uh we'll be going through here. Okay. I don't know, do I feel bold enough to go up to seven? Damn it. Nope, we're good. Okay. I'm just most most worried about getting a resource that I do not have access to. I guess the other thing I could do. Yeah, there's some cobalt and platinum. I'm just gonna process all of it. So we still have platinum, we have carbon. Carbon isn't that useful. High level equipment. Measuring equipment, and we also have plants. I don't know what plants are strictly used for. Let me get rid of the tungsten. Rare as it might be, I'm gonna bring the carbon with me. Okay, and let's fix. Because we're going to need the drill. Okay, now what do we have? We do have a rocky planet. It's going to cost me some fuel and some that. Oh, right, that's the other thing I needed to do. And probably should have done a while ago. Holy shit, we need way more iron. Oh, I went on the expedition on the previous rocky planet. I bet I didn't actually mine for any base resources. Unless it didn't let me. Okay, anomaly detected. So we have that. We have a wreck. Yeah, sure, why not? I'll just keep landing. I like the expedition system. This really does remind me of, hey, what if the, um, what if the space exploration from Mass Effect 2 had more features to it. Oh, I see. This is how we drill. Of course. Uh, do we drill now? Yes. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to need a fair bit of that. Uh, let's do another expedition. Let's see. Add to party. Yeah. Add to party. Hopefully we get some aliens at some point, just for variety's sake. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we do have to worry about a couple of negative consequences for doing things, but knowing that you can kind of just go around gives me some options. This one, maybe not so much, though. So. We found the wreck. What do we have back here? I will check everything else out first. And she's still injured from the previous one. But what do we have? Fix the transport pulley gets me some EXP. And gets me a module blueprint, which would be nice, but I don't have a Xeno linguist. Anyway, we explore a large artificial tunnel with precise right angled turns. Finally, we come across a large drilling machine, rusted over from the course of many centuries. Let's go for the EXP. Because that might actually be just as valuable, if not more so, than resources. So what do we got over here? I'm really curious about the movement speed setup, if there's ever going to be a reason for swiftness to matter. So, our expedition discovers that a ship crashed in the area long ago. Good news is the contents have not been recovered by anyone else. The bad news is that it's located underwater at the bottom of a very deep abyss. The chasm is at least 500 feet deep, perhaps more. What's more, it's home to many types of indigenous life forms. It's not surprising the wreck is yet to be, er, yet to be plundered. Let's just construct a probe. Engineer creates a subnautic probe that allows us to dive very deeply. Survey the area and collect what we choose from the wreckage. The ex the excursion is a huge success. It seems the ship was a mining vessel loaded to the brim with its latest haul. That is almost certainly what caused it to sink. Overall, the expedition is very rewarding and... Okay, so he's out of AP, but we got all the goodies. 
and a tea set and some other stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm curious about the whole movement speed thing and what that factors into. If it factors into anything at all, really. Everything in balance. Well, unfortunately, ah. Uh, our expedition arrives to find good news. A wrecked ship in excellent condition. There will almost certainly be something worth recovering at this location. However, there's also bad news. The wreck is balanced on the edge of a very large abyss. If the weight of the wreck shifts even by a meter, it'll surely tumble over the cliff. Fortunately, there's no wind here. Okay, build a counterweight. Using ropes and expedition members, we construct a counterweight that will allow the wreck to be explored. The ship is in sufficiently good condition to make this possible, and we recover interesting data from the ship's log. However, in trying to remove heavy equipment, a delicate equilibrium is broken and the ship teeters. Our crew panic and flee the wreck just in time to watch it topple into the void. But we do have the relaxation pod module. Okay. And it looks like there is actually a safe path here. I just have to go around. Go back this way. I don't think there's anything else for me to find on this planet. I like being thorough, but it's sometimes hard. But yeah, it looks like we're fine. Let's just continue. Yeah, why can I move so much further now, or at least it feels like I can? I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter that much. Uh, let's see. Down the way I came? Looks like it. Alright, and then we're done with this little expedition. It seems like this is kind of going to be the core gameplay loop. Find planet, find system, explore, random events happen. Yeah, why can I suddenly move, like, really far on this round? Unless that is swiftness. Oh, well. Either way, came out of that with pretty much nothing wrong. Do we level up? No. Not even close. Dang. I was hoping to get a level here, but it is what it is. We do find a ton of minerals, tea sets, a lot of tea sets, Azerite, and a, uh, Azerite strange device and a relaxation pod. Do I have to worry about fitting it all on cargo-wise? Yeah, we do not have enough space in the cargo hold. And I don't have any iron on me currently. So the question is, do we... Do we do that and uh, do we get rid of the plant? I thought I... Had those. Well, here's one of the other options. I'm going to just refine all of my resources. Because I've got a whole bunch that I can work with here. And I figure instead of wasting two slots on this stuff, I might as well just process it all and then keep as much as I possibly can. I'm glad that it gives me this option. You know, oh, we don't have enough inventory space. Well, now we mostly do. So I needed iron for stuff, but I'm mostly going to get rid of it. I guess I could have gotten two more resource slots, but nah. We also have Hafnium and Tungsten, but I'm going to just skip those. And take the plants. I don't know if that's the right call, but it's fine. Anyway, uh, so with all this said, I think this is a pretty good stopping point, at least for now. There's a lot to do and a lot to explore, and we're not too far from our destination, frankly, but it's still going to take a, a while to do. Oh, this is the path that I've taken. That makes so much more sense. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, it seems like most of the game is just going from point A to point B while trying to be very, very careful about keeping your hull up and your fuel up and so on and so forth. And I think there's very much, like, a, an allure to that, especially because look at all these stars. I, it frankly reminds me of, oddly enough, the space stage in Spore. Uh... And obviously also, you know, Mass Effect, where there were truly like a ridiculous number of locations to explore. And you're almost kind of encouraged to do so because, hey, you know, check out all this stuff. 
if you if you go through all of them you might be powerful enough to reach the end game obviously for spore that was not a good idea because there was like hundreds or thousands of stars to visit uh but you know that kind of feels to be the same here i even in these little snapshots how many do i have five 10 13 stars in this yellow circle alone and i don't know i feel like it would take a, a very long time to fully explore this system and i don't i don't know if that's actually worth it uh so anyway quick couple of things so out there oceans of time is out tomorrow on steam and i think good old games i could be wrong if it's coming up on uh, coming out on other ones and it is actually still a ro proper roguelike or at least somewhat roguelike you can save so there there are kind of re points that you can reset back to instead of just l outright losing i don't know how i feel about that i'm a big short play roguelike fan and so these long play roguelikes where it, you might be 17 hours in and then a bad decision Sets you back either to the beginning of the run or just, you know, a couple hours. That's painful for me. Uh, but I can see why people would like that. And it really does have that kind of, uh, I'm going to call it light Star Trek vibe. Of, you know, here's your main important crew. Plus, like, you maybe have some other crewmates that have no names or faces. And there's a lot of first contact, a lot of dis diplomacy, a lot of random aliens that might not be on your side. And so on and so forth. And I think that's kind of neat. Uh, but with all that said, I think this is a good stopping point for me. So if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons of them to check out. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.